Hello and welcome to this recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Today we're working on a relatively new project for the Pacific Yearly Meeting, which is a large group of Quakers in western United States, northern Mexico, um, I think that's the main geographic area all the way from Colorado to Hawaii, um, Washington State to Northern Mexico. Pretty big area. And there's a lot of smaller gatherings who uh, and groups who all arrive at this annual session. <clears throat> and what we want them to do is be able to register online, pay online, pay for one another's registrations, uh, pay offline as well. We can take checks and cash. Uh, so it's quite a complex, uh, social system this tool is in the in the midst of it to try to support the process and make it smoother for two main stakeholder groups the registrants the people who are wanting to attend the event and the registrar who is a person whose responsibility is to make it as easy as possible to attend help people arrange financial assistance help people arrange transportation um, you know carpooling and things like that uh, make sure they have the right accommodations, make sure their dietary needs are met and medical needs are met. All sorts of things. Res uh, Registrar has quite a big uh, responsibility and so they will be one of the main people using this tool on a daily basis. Uh, what we've done today is just getting down the road a tiny bit at a time, incremental improvement. We essentially defined a data model, part of our data model at least, for a registrant, which is again somebody who's going to attend the event. And then a page, excuse me, for viewing the registrations and searching them. Like if I want to see Strand, or I don't have multiple registrations. Oh, let's try to say that. so we can add, and the registration cost was maybe two thirty-four. And so now we have two registrations. If I want to say, well, let me see all the registrations from the Strand family. And then we can search those. These are all things that Wagtail does for uh, by default for free just by embracing the platform. I'll show you how that's defined in just a moment. Uh, really, that's the only user-facing feature we were able to implement in roughly 45 minutes. Next weekend, we'll be trying to, uh, again, so if you look back at this YouTube uh, stream for another recap video uh, in about one week, uh, you'll see hopefully a little bit more progress. Great, so let's go ahead and take a look. First at the data model. Now at the beginning of the session, we went ahead and discussed the types of relationships between entities, between different tables, essentially, so that we could figure out what the best fit is for our data and the more specifically, or I guess more broadly, what types of um, sort of situations we want to be able to support uh, for people using this software. So what we boiled it down to is, um, in the previous week, we created an account to allow users to registra register for this, to log into the actual registration portal. So it gets a little bit muddy, but if you can just keep in mind that users are registering to log in. And then once the user is logged in, they can create one or more registrations, which are people who are gonna actually attend the event. So those are event registrations. We might make it a little clearer by saying event registration, in fact. Uh, our data model will be clearer that way. Once they've created one or more, like they might be registering themselves or their family or potentially friends or members of the same meeting or worship group, uh, they can create multiple registrations. Then we'll want those registrations to be paid for. We'll want somebody to make one or more payments to cover the registration fee, whether or not it's the original user uh, it could also be the, uh, the user's meeting. Uh, so a meeting could make a payment on behalf of one or more registrants that they didn't uh, originally, re they didn't themselves register. So it's, it needs to be quite flexible for the amount of ways that people register for this uh, event, this annual event and pay for it. Some people receive financial assistance, for example. So we would have some sort of payment um, that's a, a dummy type, so to speak, not a dummy type, but like, um, the type would be instead of cash, check, or credit card, or online payment, it would be 
financial assistance, something like that. We'll get further down the road in a while, but I'm just kind of trying to ex explain this. So basically we have registration payments, linking payment and registration. There's multiple payments that could be made against um, each registration. So each registration can have multiple payments and each payment can be applied to multiple registrations, meaning a meeting could pay $500 or euros and 100 uh, euros you know, goes toward, of the payment goes towards five different registrants. So they divide it up five ways. That's a situation that has occurred in the past and is likely to occur. They want to write one check covering financial aid for five of their members. Stuff like that, we have to be able to account for that. So that said, let's take a quick look at the data model and we'll keep this relatively short. So again, we created the account model last week. I'll just go ahead and show that because it's, it's relevant, uh, but I'm not gonna show all the details of how we uh, linked it up, but essentially to the wagtail flow, it's still a little bit rough at edges, but uh, we created a custom user model in Django, importing from auth tools, which is a package I installed. And in order to make it that work, I had to define a custom registration form. And essentially, I'm thinking, I think Wagtail had some troubles. I can't remember the exact uh, details, but I had to define a get username feature in order for another package to work. It was a little bit challenging and frustrating. But in any case, you can check the source code for the full package. I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I don't think I made a recap for that, explaining the nuances I encountered there. So that said, let's take a look at what code we wrote today. I have more, uh, my memory is more fresh about this code. We defined a registrant model, which is again, the person who's going to attend the event, the, us the user classes who registers for the website. Um, the basic details for the registrant at this point, just to get something that looks uh, real, you know, we can get tangible feedback from. We're collecting a first name, a last name, and a registration cost. Now this, down the road will be calculated based on sort of the choices that they make for the registration, particularly the accommodations they need, if they need a private room, or if they can live in a, uh, they can stay there for the week in a dorm with multiple bunks with other people in the room, or if they need to um, camp, or if they're just gonna commute, if they're not gonna stay overnight at all. All those accommodations factors, including, I think, Maybe dietary choices, I can't remember, but it all factors into the registration cost. I don't think the diet actually does factor into the registration cost. The uh, kitchen staff just need to know people's registration preferences. So since we're getting a first name and last name, I also defined a full name field so that it will concatenate those two strings. Um, that lets us just see them at a glance and I, I don't have to write code to concatenate those every place I wanna do that. Just a model method, very cool. The next thing we wanna do is get that model to appear in the Wagtail admin. And I actually don't need these headphones because I'm not on the live stream anymore. <laughs> I'll go ahead and take those off. Um, so we have this nice widget here. Uh, not widget, but a menu item here with uh, an icon. And when you click it, it takes you to the appropriate page, listing uh, all the registrants, allowing you to add a new one and search and filter them. We can add more filters along the sidebar, but we will have to take that in stride as needed. So you inherit from wagtail contrib model admin and define your own model admin and then you register. There's a decorator I could use here to register it. Maybe um, it's a little cleaner if you like decorator syntax, but in any case, so it's two steps. You, you define a model admin class and you register it. And registering is what tells wagtail to render this. You have to tell wagtail what model this is managing or administering. Uh, you can tell it what text, sorry, to display here and what icon to display here. Wagtail ships with a few icons, I think a couple of dozen. You can also add packages um, like Font Awesome and render different icons. Um, I was couldn't get the Font Awesome, Wagtail Font Awesome to work. I kept getting a weird error, but in any case, Wagtail has this group icon out of the box, which is it's appropriate and it make, it's meaningful. These icons help people um, have a, an intuitive understanding of what's um, what they're looking at and it adds consistency uh, to use the same word or phrase and icon throughout the user interface. Menu order lets you control things on a fine grain. Putting it 100, it just floated it up above here. If I have two items, 100 and 101 would put them in that specific order. Uh, I didn't want it to appear in the settings menu and 
I am excluding them from Explorer. So if I go to the page Explorer, uh, I can't see any registrants uh, under the under the Wagtail pages. I can only view the registrants here. When I'm viewing them in this list, I want to display the full name, which is that model method I defined earlier, which concatenates those two strings, and a registration cost, which is a field that's directly defined on the model. So you can see you can do both. Now, however, this search widget uh, search field can only search actual fields that are stored in the database. It can't search virtual fields or fields that are model methods. Uh, I think there's a pull, um, not a pull request, but a, a support, excuse me, a feature request in uh, Wagtail GitHub to, to search, to support these um, sort of computed fields. But I can see that there would be good amount of difficulty there and uh, probably would be slow. So in any case, in order to sort of allow you to search for a full name, I can just add first name and last name. So if I search another person, it looks like it still uh, finds the record. So for all intents and purposes, that's what we need it to do. Great, that's uh, all there is to defining a model. And these are just Django models that we're working with here. We're not working with Wagtail models. Wagtail doesn't really care. Uh, the Wagtail page model does give you some extra bonus features but we don't need them for our purposes. The other thing we defined um, is how to pay, pay for them, the registration. Now again, you have a payment and a registration and multiple, we have a many to many relationships. We needed to define two tables here. First, the payment, which just has an amount right now. Uh, later on, we can add a payment source, payment type fields with an enum of values, like this is a credit card or online payment. Uh, this was a check we received in the mail. This was cash we received at the registration table. You know, all of those, and that can allow you to, um, uh, this is financial aid, for example, might be one payment type. Uh, but we just need, at this point in time, an amount field so I can get some feedback in an agile manner. We have a meeting about this on Monday. Then we need a many-to-many -many table, that table in between to re uh, bridge registrants and payments. So we're trying to keep our vocabulary consistent. We have a registrant field that uses a foreign key to the registrant table. And when I'm looking at a given registrant, I can say, well, give me the payments for this registrant. That's gonna allow us to do things like summing up the um, total for payments, for all payments that have been applied to that registrant to see if they've paid enough. Likewise, we have a payment field, which links to the payment table by a foreign key, which says, uh, give me the registrant. So when I have a particular payment in hand, I, I query that in the database and I get that into the code context, I can say, show me the payments, uh, show me the registrants there. That would allow us to, for example, tally up or sum up the total registration fees for all re uh, related registrants to this payment. Uh, basically, hmm, we'll just see what they all owe, but I think we're gonna have to add another field here. that shows registration payment amount. And basically the registration payment amount, I will have to add that in a moment, should not exceed the total amount for the payment, nor the total registration, remaining registration cost for the registrant. This is where we're gonna hit a little bit more complicated uh, code. I'm thinking a little bit ahead here. Uh, I'll have a more uh, concrete example of this as our development process progresses, but you can see generally how we're going to be doing these things. We're going to be computing it uh, at runtime and validating things that payments, you don't pay too much. You don't use a hundred dollar payment for 10 registrants who, you know, their total for to pay to 10 total re uh, registration fees for 10 registrants who, that sums up to like a thousand euros. You got to make sure that the, the numbers uh, mesh up for accounting purposes. So it's a little bit tricky, uh, but the, we're dealing with real money here and uh, a really important organization. So we want to get this stuff right, but we do need to work, uh, again, a, a, in an iterative manner, an agile manner, and a lean manner. We don't want to define too much here. We're trying to keep our data model as simple as possible, only adding elements we know uh, we're, we're going to need and only accounting for scenarios we know are common and are impactful, which can be kind of difficult. Um, because it's easy to come up with scenarios that may or may not occur, but it's more difficult to estimate the likelihood of those um, without some sort of hindsight of, of you know, observing those actual 
scenarios occurring in the real world, then you get what's called a prior probability. And it makes it easier to estimate like how often that's gonna happen in the future. And also it's important to estimate the impact of that uh, happening. You know, is it really expensive or costly or would it prevent somebody from attending the event, for example? Uh, then you would probably wanna write code to prevent it. But if it's something that would have a uh, you know, minor impact and is very relatively rare, um, you know, you have an inf you can make an informed decision about whether or not you want to mitigate that issue in code, and that's one of the challenges of developers and product owners is to to work with stakeholders and make sure that you're developing purpose-built software. It's quality, easy to use, handles the right scenarios, but also that you're not making it overly complicated by accounting for things that don't really naturally occur or maybe aren't adding extra features that aren't really needed, stuff like that. Anyway. Don't want to go on too long. So this again has been a review session for CodeBuddies.org live coding session. By the way, this program is written in Python and Django, and we've been doing these as part of a series on Python and Django on CodeBuddies. CodeBuddies.org is an open source platform itself, as well as a community, and the community are in the midst of a rewrite currently. Um, we're rewriting CodeBuddies version three in several languages. Uh, concurrently to see you know what's the best fit for the next ge generation of the website we have a Django prototype uh, a react front-end prototype I think some people are prototyping in JavaScript uh, maybe a Ruby on Rails prototype so if you're wanting to get in on the ground floor of a of, you know a good open source project a new open source project as well as get involved with an active community please do stop by codebuddies.org check us out check out the current platform form uh, github.com slash code buddies if you want to check out our development efforts we really appreciate having you all right well thanks again for your time and have a great day